You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and thanks for joining me on another special edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P., and in Jim's absence, I'm very pleased to have a very special guest host and someone who has her own show here on West Hartford Television, Miss Adele Clark. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, I am, I am thrilled that you're here. And I also have a very good friend of mine, a prominent attorney in the area, and a barrister of justice himself, <laughs> Mr. Chris Williams. It's good to be back, Bob. I am you. glad to have you on the show. And uh, for some of my regular viewers, you probably will remember Chris from a few shows back joining us. on. Um, I don't remember exactly what the wine we were covering that what day was, but you were a great guest, and we drank a lot of good wine. It was the Rydell glasses. It was the Rydell glasses. Did you go out and buy any after that? Actually, I had some. Oh, well. That, that <laughs> wedding gifts, I didn't, we didn't open yet. That's so phenomenal. We, we use them often now. Well, we're going to be experiencing some really tasty barbecue-oriented wines today, Del. And uh, I know I saw your show with Jacob on this month, or last month. It's still on, actually, this month. Yes, it is. And it got me thinking that I'm going to do a show, which I wanted to do last year, what I can get around to, wines that go great with barbecue-type food or somebody who likes pasta, cold pasta dishes, and Italian type cheese dishes. And I think the three wines that will be tasted tonight all are really high rated. They're some of my favorites for the summer. And they're gonna be exciting to drink. I'm excited to taste them. Yeah, look forward to it. And what we're gonna drink first today is, you know what, I'm not gonna do that one first. I'm gonna do the Pinot, the Monte's Sauvignon Blanc from Chile. Now, me, I love a good Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. especially in the summertime. If you're having a little spicy food or something a little on the uh, um, chicken side, a good Sauvignon Blanc is fruity, very forward in flavor, and if it's a hot day, it really refreshes the palate. So this one's highly rated. What are you um, pairing the food? What kind of food yes. is this? Yes. Chris and I will be consuming some chicken first, a chipotle-based barbecue chicken, which I will suggest to anybody, a nice chipotle sauce on a, a grilled piece of chicken on the grill. Okay goes phenomenal with a Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Of course, Chris might disagree with me after this. And Adele, what I paired for you was the Tuscan pasta salad. Um, it shouldn't be too in-your-face flavor-wise, okay. mild enough, but still with a little bite to it, a little kick to it, so you can enjoy the, the Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blancs are one of my favorites. I, I'm not sure if whites are one of your favorites, even in the summertime, Chris, are they? Well, I typically don't drink whites, but when I do, it is during the summertime because it can be the cooler, cool you down, and so that's when I do drink. Yeah, if the beer's not cooling you down, this definitely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what that's we're gonna true. do first is we're gonna taste the Sauvignon Blanc okay. before we even taste any of the food that goes with it, and see how it tastes on our palate. Okay. Okay. Now that's very crisp. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's not too like in your face, smacking around like some of the Chardonnays I had last month on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Though I did like those Chardonnays, Kalen, if you're watching, I did like them. Um, actually, I think I liked all of them, if I remember correctly. But if you're sitting outside at the beach or at the shore or at the pool, and you have a glass of this, of this in your hand, this is going to pair well with the chicken. It's going to pair well with the pasta salad. It's going to pair well with seafood. Mm. So what I'm going to do, Chris, is, uh, and Adele, if you don't mind picking up your fork yes. and trying a piece of the uh, chicken. Now, do you find yourself um, sticking more to white during um, the summertime, or do you switch, you know, back and forth depending on what you're eating? I definitely stick more to whites and rosés, which I'll go into later, though I do like a red mm. in the evening in the summer. Okay. Not in the daytime, though. 
Well, that goes well. Yeah. Now, see, it that's really a, does go well. That's a good example. We've talked about this before in the show. With something spicy, a Pinot Grigio, like we'll have later, or a Sauvignon Blanc, or even a Riesling, really is quite refreshing. Goes very well mm. with like barbecue chicken or something on the spicier side for seafood. Brings out the flavor. Now, I, I think the pasta probably, uh, did you get any of the flavor oh, characteristics? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You totally, you can tell the difference. It complements it really well. And I think something on the lighter side with this kind of pasta salad, is um, this white wine is great. And, and one of the things I like about this um, Sauvignon Blanc is it's refreshing and light. And like you said earlier, some of the Chardonnays and other white wines, I do feel like I'm being smacked around and overwhelmed by the, the taste of it. So here it's light. And it, it's refreshing, and I think uh, for for someone like me who doesn't always drink white wines, I think this would be a really good choice for the summertime. Yeah, I'm not sure what your experience with white wines is, Adele, but my really foray into white wines was Sauvignon Blancs because I found them very easy to drink early. Now that's probably why that I'm still hesitant to drink a lot of Chardonnays because they're a little on the heavier side, mm -hmm. and even that's not a technical right term for some Chardonnays. They're buttery, they're a little bit more heavy. Um, I definitely think they're more like fuller body. So I definitely ten, um, tend to stick to something like a Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Grigio. Those are my two favorites. And there's something very summery about drinking a, a wine like this, especially if you're outside, if you're at the shore, you're sitting outside mm -hmm. at your deck. It's just, to me, this is a really easy to drink summer white. Um, have your feet up, you know, yes. you got a shrimp skewer in your hand, <laughs> exactly. just get Jimmy Buffett on the radio. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's it that. right there. Well, Jimmy Buffett would probably have a margarita too, besides a glass of wine, but that's might have both. Yeah. Why, that's hands. right. Why not have both? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So that was the Montes from Chile is another example. And we've talked about this before that for Chilean wines, I've still never had a Chilean wine that I didn't like. Okay. Um, they usually are always quite refreshing. They're quite flavorful. They're very moderately priced you don't generally at least i don't usually buy anything from chile over twenty dollars this good. particular wine i think is under fourteen dollars in that price wow. range which is a really good price point for a refreshing white wine yeah. so what we're going to do next and i think pretty much almost everybody filled their white finished their white yes no. it was that we good. didn't taste the meat with the white so i wanted to see how that went okay it probably might not go quite as well as the chicken and adele i know you got a uh eggplant tortellini there. I'm not sure how that's going to pair with the white, but this is an example of if it doesn't pair well, then you don't eat the eggplant tortellini right. with this particular <laughs> one. So these uh, hamburgers that we have are White Castle sliders. I did not make them on my own. So, um, <laughs> you should have said that you did. I was going to, but nobody <laughs> would believe that Bobby P. the wine guy can make this perfect little square hamburger. So we're going to give this a bite. Cheers. Yeah. I think this is going to go really well. Wow. This one goes better with the tortellini. Now, for me, not quite as good with the hamburger. You know, because you got the bread, you got the onions, you got the meat. In combination, the hamburger itself, or the slider, is quite good. Mm -hmm. But when you drink something like this, not quite as good of a pairing. You get a lot going on, both in your jowls and on your tongue, which wasn't quite as refreshing as the chicken. I agree, because so, and it's more of a, a bland flavor with the hamburger than mm -hmm. with the, the chicken. The spice kind of went well with the, the uh, wine. Well, it's an example of when we get to the Bordeaux, the Chops and Burgers Bordeaux. I think that's when we'll really say, wow, that's really good. I've had this Chops and Burgers Bordeaux. It's a very moderately priced French board from the Bordeaux region. I think it's a bland Merlot um, cab sob. It's phenomenal. It goes with pretty much any kind of meat you can put on the grill. I mean, if you can cook it, if it was alive and you can cook it, that's going to go well with it. <laughs> so, all right, so the Montes Chile and uh, Sauvignon Blanc, I'm going to give a thumbs up on that. Mm -hmm. um, I've had it before, and I'm going to be a little biased, but please, you guys give your own honest opinion on it. Um, I definitely, it's probably out a new taste for me. I'm definitely, am I allowed to give it two thumbs up? Sure, I've never done a two thumbs up. Before. I love it. I think it's great. I'm not a, it's with with white wines. You know, you have to be careful. Like the Sauvignon Blanc, sometimes it could be a little too sweet. That's right. And this one is like a happy medium for me. So, two thumbs up for me. Wow. Yeah, I am. Um, that's great. I uh, I would give it a thumbs up. I like it. I usually don't drink uh, white wines, but this is something I would drink, uh, buy, and have 
at a barbecue. So this is, or reading a book. Well, what's great about this is, like I said, because it's not a heavy white wine, it's not going to overpower anything that you have on your picnic table, whether it's, you know, uh, seafood, whether it's a hamburger, even though obviously it doesn't go very well with the hamburger, (laughs) it's not going to overpower whatever you're serving with it. I could see this going really well with uh, shellfish. Oh, yeah. You know, Actually, shellfish it. would go phenomenal. Yeah, with. I absolutely. really could see that being a great pairing. And um, anything spicy. And it, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Make like a cream pasta, uh, cream sauce pasta with some seafood in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it would go really nice with that. Yeah. So why don't we finish our last two sips there. Or if you don't right. want, you can use a glass to pour it out. And we're going into, I hope I got my Italian right. <laughs> one another one of my favorites, the Tenuta Cabornini. And that's the region that this Pinot Grigio is from. It's from uh, the northern part of Italy where some of the best Pinot Grigios actually come from. It's one of my favorite go-tos in the summer, especially if I'm having a really spicy Cajun-style barbecue. Mm -hmm. Mm. This is really what I like a lot. Now, this might not be for everybody's taste, but it's also our most expensive wine this evening. Wow. I'm excited. So, so Bob, flavor-wise, what are you looking for when you have a Sauvignon Blanc versus a Pinot Grigio? Yes, you're going to taste that right off the bat when we have our first sip of this. Okay. A Sauvignon Blanc is always on the fruiter citrusy side. It tends to be a little drier. Um, there's nothing lingering. It doesn't hit you as much in the jowls. I remember when we had the hamburger and then we had the Sauvignon Blanc. For us, I'm not sure about you. It was a different taste. It was right here because mm-hmm. it wasn't a good combination between the food and the pairing. However, this should go a little bit better than the first one that we tried with the meat. Mm-hmm. We shall see. So let's take our first sip okay. of the Pinot Grigio. Mm. Now, right off the bat, it's also heavier. Oh, I like talking about the legs. There's a lot of legs on that one. Mm-hmm. A little creamier texture. Um, definitely more of a flavor profile in this when it comes to defining the different flavors that are in this wine. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, it's also lingering a little bit more than the Sauvignon Blanc, which it should. Yeah, yes. and it, it, it certainly is heavier. Uh, it feels thicker on the tongue and... Uh, you know, it has that almost a little bit of buttery. Yes, that's do, exactly. Do you, I taste it. It, it. This, if you didn't tell me this is a Pinot Grigio, I would definitely think it was a Chardonnay. Yeah, it, it, it tastes almost a little Chardonnay. It's very characteristic for a dry white Pinot Grigio from Italy. Once again, it, some of the best Pinot Grigios in Italy come from this region. I reason I like this a lot is because I tend to eat a lot of spicy food in the summertime. If I'm cooking, I'm going to slather it with the most spicy barbecue sauce or Cajun season that you can possibly imagine. And if I don't have a Riesling on hand, I usually always have a couple bottles of that particular Pinot mm-hmm. Grigio in my cellar. And you take a bite into something very spicy, which we'll do in a moment, and take a sip of this, I think you really notice a, a really pleasant experience for the taste buds. Wow. Why don't we try that? Okay, <laughs> sounds great. And I think, Adele, you're going to go with the pasta I'm go with first. Okay, yeah. you got it. Once again, that goes great with the chicken. It really does. That's great. So so for me. Not not as well with the pasta. Yeah, because this one's again, this is a lighter pasta, and this one was a little bit more heavy bodied for me. So did you actually try a tomato? I didn't. You think that would have had the the difference? I uh, bet. It might have made a little bit of a difference. I don't know if you have enough. Do you need a little more splash? It's just splash. Now, why would that make a difference? Uh, because of the uh, acidity. Citrus. Oh, okay. Right. In the tomato itself. These are just an example of some summer wines. I picked these three particular ones mm. because these are some of my favorite for barbecue. And you know, I know a lot of people um, probably aren't familiar with either one of these three on the table. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's all different types of Pinot Grigios. There's all different types of Sauvignon Blancs. And the reason I'm Bobby P. the wine guy is because <laughs> I've drank a lot of Sauvignon Blancs and Pinot Grigios. <laughs> and I've come to realize that you know, I, I narrow it down to what I like in the summertime. Mm-hmm. These two particular are some of my favorites to go to. And I think when Jacob was on your show, he, did he have a rosé when he was we on the show? We had a rosé, and it was complete opposite of what I thought or what I've had as far as rosés go. I mean, I love rosés. I was going to bring one tonight, but I figured with the food, having three people on the show, it might be a little difficult to do four bottles of wine. Mm-hmm. But I love a rosé. Yeah. It's, it also depends. Like, that rosé was complete different. You know, there's different types of rosés. 
So I think that it also depends on what you're eating with a rosé. Because, you know, it's, if you find a rosé that's on the sweeter side and you have this burger, it's probably not going to work so well. Speaking but, of the burgers, that's our next yes. tasting. So okay. let me pour a little bit more for us. Now, do you like go and you pair different wines? Do you like to kind of stick to a certain kind of wine or do you try different ones every time? Ah. Like at home. <clears throat> I do do a lot of experimenting. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> I, I do. And uh, you have to do that. I, know, I have some friends who just stick to three or four varietals. That's all they'll drink. Okay. As much as I've tried to twist their arm, pull their hair, they still stick to those three varietals. Yeah. Which I don't get because what is the harm of trying? Right. It's wine. Mm. <laughs> Try a different wine, folks. It's, it's delicious. If you don't like it, you'll never buy it again. Exactly. For me, though, I like experimenting. I'll do a lot of wine tastings, you know, okay. and go to a lot of the wine tastings. I'll, I'll join wine clubs and get different things sent to me so I can just taste them on my own. Okay. And either I'll make notes or say to myself, okay, I like this particular wine, this varietal. I'll buy this, put it downstairs and, uh, you know, save it for next time. Sure. So right. are we ready? Are we ready? Still good, even though the burger's been sitting out for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, see, that goes better. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bet you had the um, eggplant tortellini with that. Mm -hmm. Did that go better than the assembly? It does. Ones? You know why? That ricotta that's inside, it's like there's also another kind of cheese that's in there, and that one pairs well with it. I think it's the creaminess. It is. And this particular Pinot Grigio, there's a certain texture to this Pinot Grigio that pairs well for the, the fat that's in the burger mm -hmm. and probably mm -hmm. the same thing for the cheese. Sure. Yeah. So that one paired well with the burger. Much better than the, uh, the Sauvignon Blanc did. Interesting. And by the way, Dale, I wanted to thank you. I don't know if the camera can see this, but Adele was very gracious to make these fantastic glasses. Um, I, I, I don't know how you do this. I mean, I, I'm incapable of doing any craft projects other than mowing the lawn. <laughs> so um, yeah. that really is very nice of you to bring oh, this on the show. Of course, it's fun. Um, obviously, <laughs> we'll get a nice little close-up of it, but for those of you that can't read it from this far away, I made a glass that says one guy, one gal, and even more wine. So just <laughs> that's a little nice. fun, you know, yeah. add some fun to the show. So Well, that's phenomenal. And then we'll talk about your show uh, later on because I do want to talk about your show before the end of the show. Sure. So, so far... I'm giving another thumbs up to that um, uh, Pinot Grigio. Yeah, I will as well. Although I liked, I Sa think I liked the Sauvignon Blanc more. Um, so I will give it a thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up, but I only do because I liked it with the eggplant tortellini. That's right. So this gets one thumb only, Adele. Yeah, only one. It's only one. I only, I would have done a halfway thumb, but I'm giving it the full because this, it made all the difference with the um, eggplant tortellini. Well, here's, once again, as Adele had mentioned earlier, can you drink red wine in the summertime? Mm -hmm. Yes, if you like red wine, you can drink red wine in the summertime. The question is, when do you consume the red wine, what part of the day, and what type of red wine is it? Sure. Now, people will say that, okay, I have a, it's a Bordeaux red from the Bordeaux region. It's a blend. What difference does it make if it's the summertime or the wintertime? It's still the same red. I would say yes, however. We're going to do a tasting right now where this particular Bordeaux is so easy to drink and just so refreshing, in my opinion, my opinion, that it's more of a summer wine because of how you're eating food that pairs with this. To me, mm -hmm. this is a steak on the grill. This is a burger, even a hot dog. Um, Adele has the eggplant uh, tortellini and uh, the Tuscan pasta salad. I think that should be very well because both those meals are very rich and heavy. Sure. So let's take a sip of this Bordeaux. Okay. Mm. It's a blend of, is it a... It's a blend of uh, Merlot and uh, Sav uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. Now, right off the bat, you probably will say, well, there's not much flavor there. There's not a lot of character there. I don't want a lot of in-your-face mm. character in the summertime. Okay. I want something that's going to drink more like an Italian red, but this happens to be a French red. A lot of people think, oh, it's French. Oh, <laughs> you smell here your French wine. <laughs> no, 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 no. French wines can be just as easy to drink. <clears throat> is a Chianti or something from, from Italy. And that's why I think this pairs well with anything that you're going to be eating in the summertime, okay. whether it's on the grill, off the grill, or whatnot. I, I, think, I, I think this is phenomenal. <clears throat> I, um, one of the things I like to do is when I grill, 
I have a glass of red um, because usually I'm grilling um, ribs or steaks and I find that a, a you know a, a red that's like this that's not you know in your face is really brings out the flavors and the spices really well that's what this is supposed to do I mean the flavors are more simplistic for summertime mm -hmm. food and that might be a generalization I mean it's a hamburger right it's a piece of steak I mean you know your, your flavor profile is not like you're going out to a five-star Michelin based restaurant this <laughs> sort of massages the food mm -hmm. and doesn't overpower the food so you can enjoy the food and still get your wine king. That's right. Yes. Do you do like a rub on your um, meat? Oh, the great uh, the, sure the, the, the sauce versus the uh, the rub rib debate. Yeah. I um I actually prefer rubs. Okay. They're a lot harder to cook though. Okay. Um, so how about you? Do you have? Uh, I I like rubs. Yeah. Yeah. When I eat, when I uh, cook, I like rubs because you can let them sit for a little while. And again, I was just thinking when you said ribs that this would go really well with um, yeah. like a rub. You know, because it's not on the, it's a little bit lighter, but this would bring out the flavor, so. That's true. And in fact, you were saying earlier, you're talking about the Cajun, um, I guess, rubs or mm -hmm. spices versus the sauce. You find a difference uh, with the wines between sauces oh, and Oh, absolutely. Rubs? It, it's fantastic you guys brought that up because I, too, prefer a rub. Because if you have too much barbecue sauce sometimes, then you're just overpowering your palate, mm -hmm. your stomach. It's just too much fluid. Mm. I mean, fluid's probably a simplistic term, but it's the same thing with the reason I don't drink a lot of beer in the summertime besides the fact that it's so easy to drink, <laughs> I drink too much of it, and then my stomach is full and I can't really right. enjoy anything. Right. So a wine like this, or any of the wines that are on the table, or a wine that you yourself might like, um, you can drink a little bit slower, not as consuming as much fluid, and enjoy the food. Yeah. So now comes the, the eating food. time with, <laughs> with the Bordeaux. So I'm gonna go with the chicken first on this one, Chris. Okay, I will as well. Very light bouquet on this also. You don't mm -hmm. really smell too much. Mm. Me first? Yes, sure. you first. <laughs> I'm gonna, and this is one of the reasons I love this particular Chops and Burgers wine. I found more characteristic of the flavor of the wine after eating a piece of the chicken. I, I, I agree completely. This is my, by far my favorite of the wines. I'm a, I'm a red person. Ah. So this is my two thumbs up. <laughs> um, but I, I thought the same thing. The wine tasted better with the food. Um, and vice versa, really. So. Yeah, um, I think this one's great. It complements it really well. Again, I'm still going with the Sauvignon Blanc as far as flavor, <laughs> but I do I do enjoy it. Did you try the pasta salad first? I did the pasta salad first and I had a tomato this time. <laughs> with the pasta and i want to emphasize again that you know jim and i have talked about this in the show that a lot of people get intimidated by french wines in particular not so much italian wines because you know italian wines though they can be complex because they, they're labeled so differently much like the french wines they are labeled as to what region of italy they're from but people just have this misconception that if it's french it's too complicated there's too much going on in the bottle you know i just want a freaking bottle of wine <laughs> you can't get much more simple than shops and burgers for a name. Oh, that's right. And you're getting the benefit of a French wine from the Bordeaux region, which you can impress your friends. So <laughs> you can be the snob <laughs> and still serve a simplistic wine, which is not going to offend anybody. Exactly. And I think this one does it. Cool. So now comes the bite of the hamburger. Okay. Mm. You think people get nervous because it's French and that's where um, yeah. you're supposed to get bubblies from? I think that's exactly the reason. Mm. I'm going to be so munching down on this food at the end of the show, guys. So just so you know that this will not be going to waste. But <laughs> I think this goes phenomenal with the hamburger. I think so as well. I think it actually goes better with the hamburger almost mm. than the chicken. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to say um, I'm, I like them both equally, but mm. uh, you're certainly entitled, Chris, to like one more than the other. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, uh, I definitely think that this um, goes better with the uh, tortellini again, that cheese. The cheese out. aspect mm -hmm. of it, which is funny because French, cheese, Bordeaux. Ah, so they, you there those, you go. They still put that in that wine, so it's always going to go very well with any type of cheese that you eat. Yeah. And sometimes um, cheese is kind of difficult to pair with a red wine. I think I talked about that on one show previously. But this is an example where this particular type of red 
because it's on the milder side, mm -hmm. pairs very well with the cheese that's in there and probably would pair well with even a lighter, like a, a sharp cheese or some um, oh, sure. or something like that. Mm. So I guess French wine isn't that scary after all. You don't mm. have to be a, you know. My, uh, my rule of thumb is don't be afraid of any wine until you try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try it first. I mean, there's so there's a plethora. Now, Adele, you're out on the street all the time with what's, what's happening in West Hartford. Yes. There are so many events. There's so many wine tastes that are going on. And just here in town, people, go try them. Please, I beg of you, try different wine and make your own opinion. But try, try, try. Don't be stuck on just three or four brands because you you're really missing out. Wine is a phenomenal and enjoyable activity. And I think you really enjoy it more if you just experiment a little. Sure, you can go. There's, I think, a, you know, can go on those wine trails that they have if you want to, you know, be adventurous. Try them on the wine trail. I mean, yeah, you can. I mean, another controversial subject you oh, brought up. Sorry, um, <laughs> I, I am just trouble. I should just stick to my own show. <laughs> I mean, we there are some good wines that are made in Connecticut. Some of the better wines that are made in Connecticut tend to be blends from grapes that come from California. Not that there's anything wrong with that per se, but there's. There are, the wine trail is both fun, enjoyable, and you do get to try a lot of different types of wine. Mm -hmm. um, but because I'm not being paid by anybody, I can say that, please, um, don't think you're getting a 100% usually made Connecticut mm -hmm. wine, because yeah, you're always and you're, not. Yeah, you're not. So before we wrap up the show, Adele, I want to talk a little about what's <coughs> happening in West Hartford, because yes. I want to know what's happening in West Hartford. What what's is up? happening? <laughs> um, well, you guys should be excited, everybody out there. Uh, I am having an um, improv group coming in. Uh, they are going to do a nice little activity here for us, and it's going to be interactive. I believe that I might have you guys in the audience as uh, guests. So uh, that's what I have uh, coming forward, and then we'll see from there. I have Hopefully people will contact me on my website or my Facebook page. Uh, you can write in and tell me that you want to be on my show. And uh, also, I want everyone to know that the reason I do my show is for me to possibly make moves and possibly become the next Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to start somewhere, so. Well, you got such a great one name show. Yeah, exactly. Adele. Adele. The right. Adele show. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So hopefully that is what I'm looking forward to do. But I'll still do what's happening with Starford no matter what. Yeah, well, it's a great show and I've, I've seen uh, your episodes and Thank I you. love the fact that you can get so many segments in and so you can cover more things yeah. instead of just devoting you know one whole show to something. But it makes it a little bit more uh, interesting to find out what's really going on at West Hartford because you cover so much. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. And I just wanted to let people know that uh, Jim is still in Boston. He is still uh, relocated. Well, he's actually done with relocating. He's actually enjoying his new life, his new wife, his new job. And we do hope to have him back soon. Um, but if uh, Jim's watching right now, Jim, we miss you. And a little toast to you. Mm -hmm. And Chris, anything coming up with you? I know you're a new, semi-new dad. Yeah, I uh, have a seven-month-old Lilia. She's doing really well. Um, thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, thanks, uh, Mom, for watching her, Holly. <laughs> thanks, Mom, Lily. for having him, failing to be on the show tonight. Lily's mom, Holly. <laughs> so please, uh, check us out on Facebook, either Two Guys and a Lot of Wine, Adele, What's Happening in West Hartford. I want to thank both my guests for being on today. And until next time, I'm Bobby P. That's Adele. That's Chris. Keep us all in your wine cellar. <laughs> yes.